Hi everyone, I hope you're doing well. Welcome back to Miss Fontaine channel. For the returning subscribers, thank you. For the new viewers, kindly subscribe to this channel to keep learning. Learning never stops. In this session, we're going to look at DNA fingerprinting as well as fingerprinting technologies. DNA fingerprinting is a procedure whereby the genetic information, this is called DNA, in a person's cell is analyzed and identified. DNA fingerprinting is a procedure where genetic information in a person's cell is analyzed and identified. And fingerprinting has been used in this concept considering considering the fact that uh, just like uh, fingerprints the genetic code of a person is different to that of the other person the exemption of uh, identical twins and that's why dna fingerprinting is applied in determining family relationship detecting inherited diseases identifying a dead body it is seen. and you might be wondering how are these samples obtained for DNA fingerprinting um, a small sample of maybe hair, skin, blood, saliva or even other body fluids is all that's needed for DNA fingerprinting and what's a DNA profile and what are the principles of DNA fingerprinting for the for the prin principle of DNA fingerprinting find that the human genome possesses numerous uh, non-coding but inheritable sequences of base or bases which are repeated many times and these sequences occur near the telomere or centromeres y chromosomes as well as heterochromatic area and the area with the same sequence of bases repeated several times is called the repetitive dna and they can be separated as satellites from the bulk dna during a density gradient centrifug centrifugation and hence called the satellite DNA. In satellite DNA, repetition of bases is in tandem, is depending on length, base composition, and numbers of tandemly repetitive units. So we have mini satellites and micro satellites. Mini satellites, it's a section of uh, DNA that consists of a short series of about 10 to 60 base pairs. And they occur at more than uh, 100 locations in the human genome. And mini satellites consist of repetitive, generally, that is the GC rich variants, repeats, which change in length from 10 to over 100 bases. And the significance of mini satellites is that due to their high level of polymorphism, VNTRs have been extensively used for DNA fingerprinting as well as for genetic markers in linkage analysis and as well as population studies. We have microsatellites. These are the repeating sequences of one to six base pairs of DNA. Microsatellites are typically neutral and codominant. They are used as molecular markers in genetic, for, as well as uh, for population studies. They can only they can also be used to study ju gene duplication or even deletion. And the sig significance of uh, microsatellites is that the role of micro and mini satellites in DNA structures. Or the function is not known, but their presence has helped in the construction of genetic maps in the isolation of genes responsible for causing human diseases. 
and also in the development of technique of DNA fingerprinting. Um, mini satellites and micro satellites define that uh, mini satellites are a complexity of array heterogeneous, micro satellites are a complexity of array homogeneous. Mm, this is the simplest way of how do you get a DNA profile? Get a sample of DNA. That is a sample that is going to be a source of DNA. You extract the DNA. We've learned the, we've covered the DNA extraction in, in our previous videos. Kindly watch. We have the copy. We have copied the DNA. That is through PCR. We've also learned PCR. We've covered PCR in a in one of our previous videos. Then you determine the size of the SCR and then you're going to check whether there is a match that is after the DNA profile has been generated. We have DNA fingerprinting methods. In up, up to 1984, the only method of establishing and authenticating personal identification was the fingerprint process. But in 1984, Sir Alec Jeffries at the University of Leicester in England was able to distinguish differences among individuals based solely on their DNA composition. The main types of DNA fingerprinting methods we have a restriction fragment length polymorphism that is our FLP. This analyzes the length of the strands of the DNA molecules with the repeating base pair patterns. DNA molecules are long strands found tightly wound in chromosomes which are contained in the nucleus of each human cell. Within each DNA strand, there are a number of genes that determine the particular characteristics of an individual. The restriction fragment length polymorphism analysis is used to detect the repeated sequences by determining a specific pattern to the VNTR, which becomes uh, the person's DNA fingerprint. The drawback with this system is that it requires a considerable amount of DNA. And this, this can be a challenge, especially where the amount of DNA is limited. One is polymerase chain reaction, which was developed by Kari Mollis in the year 1983. The PCR analysis amplifies the DNA molecule, molecules using a smaller sample. The PCR analysis amplified isolated regions on the strands of DNA and the examination. Okay, the, the drawback of this is that it's not as discriminating as the RFLP. We have a amplified fragment length polymorphism. And it came into, full, into vogue in the 90s. It remains attractive because of its relatively less complicated operation and the cost of effectiveness. And however, due to the use of the gel in its analysis phase, there are issues of bunching of the VTR ends, causing misidentification in the process. We have a short term repeat that is STR methodology for extracting DNA in the system. It's most widely used form of DNA fingerprinting. The STR analyzes how many times base pair repeat themselves on a particular location on a strand of DNA. And the advantage of this method is that DNA comparison can match the possibility into an almost endless reach. We have uh, applications of DNA fingerprinting, individuality. DNA fingerprinting can help to distinguish one human being from another with the exception of monozygotic twins. Because 
monozygotic twins have the same gene profiles. We have paternity or maternity disputes. DNA fingerprinting can identify the real genetic mother, father, offspring. Yep. Can also be applied in checking the human lineage. Also, checking for her hereditary diseases. In forensics, that is why it's very useful in detection of crime and legal pursuits. In sociology, where it can identify racial groups, their origin, historical migrations, inversions, etc. That is uh, DNA fingerprinting and its applications.